knitters. Behind that quiet, calm facade, they're a forward-thinking bunch, always wanting to be on the cutting edge. Just ask Heather Bredner, owner of Aberdeen's Wool Company in Lindsay, Ontario. Knitters are an interesting group, and we all love to go experience new things and see new yarns and see new colors. I want to do this pattern. <laughs> With her customers constantly demanding the latest trends. Do you have anything interesting in worsted? Bredner figured she'd up her game. There's this one. She decided to hit the festival beautiful. circuit. The Mother Earth News Fair and Fiber Fest in Frederick, Maryland. Bredner applied for and landed a coveted vendor's booth for the two-day event. Here was a chance to learn from other like-minded artisans, network with fellow knitters. We prepared all of the product that we needed to take and you know, started work with customs brokers and all of that stuff. So these are the documents that we crossed the border with. They Brokerage were, fees paid, um, Maryland sales tax license obtained, letters. passports pre-cleared, Bredner, along with her parents and an employee, loaded about 11 grand worth of wool into their cars and hit the road. And that's where this yarn began to unravel. They headed for the border crossing between Gananoque, Ontario, and Alexandria Bay, New York. When they got to the U.S. Customs windows, the agent asked the purpose of their trip. And said to me, how do you expect to come into this country to work? So it went downhill from there. Very much so. They were separated from each other, she says, taken to a room, held with no explanation. And they took mug shots and then they were like, well, we're going to fingerprint you now. And I'm like, okay. And... So at that point, to be brutally honest with you, so now I'm crying <laughs> and ask if I need a lawyer, like am I being arrested? We were told that as Canadian citizens, we have absolutely no right to a lawyer. We have no rights because we're Canadian citizens. Eventually, she says they got an explanation. The gentleman came to the counter and said, your customs paperwork, everything is perfect, but you're not going to the States because you do not have an E-2 visa. An E-2 visa. According to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, an E-2 applies to those who have invested or be actively in the process of investing a substantial amount of capital in a bona fide enterprise in the United States. Exactly what constitutes a substantial amount isn't clearly defined, but immigration lawyers say generally it's the type of investment made by larger corporations, perhaps planning to expand U.S. operations. You told them you were just going for a couple days to sell some yarn? Yes, they had our full exhibitor package from the festival. We asked U.S. Customs and Border Protection about all this. We didn't get much more information than Bredner. They told us she did not possess work authorization to sell the merchandise in the United States. Bredner posted what happened on social media, which got the knitting community on both sides of the border tied up in knots. I think the E2 is way off base. American knitter and immigration lawyer Jung Tran was incensed. She says Bredner would never qualify for an E-2, and if anything, a different visa for temporary business visitors, called a B-1, might have been appropriate. If this doesn't fit into B-1 activity, then I don't see any other visa category that it fits into. So that leaves us at the point that, are we saying that this activity is not permitted at all. You can't let people into the country to vend at a craft fair. Apparently so. Word is, at the border, the attitude from U.S. Customs is not nearly as welcoming as it once was. There probably is more of a crackdown now than there used to be. Henry Chang is a Canadian immigration lawyer who advises companies wanting to do business in the U.S. You can expect more scrutiny and more difficulties during the Trump administration. He's made it clear that he doesn't like foreign nationals, and, and that includes Canadian citizens. So there will be greater scrutiny as a result of that. That's certainly what Heather Bredner discovered. To me, it felt like there was no difference whether or not I had a truck full of heroin or whether I had a truck full of yarn. It was the same reaction or what I anticipate would be the same reaction. Is this the contraband? This is the contraband. This, this is the very scary, scary, scary yarn. With lost yarn sales and other costs, Bredner figures she's out at least $25,000. Worse, she could face problems if she wanted to travel to the U.S. in the future. 
Not that she plans to. Nah, I don't know that I'm gonna cross the border anytime soon because it was utterly terrifying. And that is one darn hole that won't be mended anytime soon. Aaron Saltzman, CBC News, Lindsay, Ontario.